Forget our song. Hello, tops. Top secret. Top no. Top secret. Top top secret. Yeah, that's it. Top secret. Top top secret. Yeah. What up, my little tops? Oh my god. What, what up, did? my fucking little toppy twippies? I don't know if anyone listened to S Town. <laughs> it's like, like five a, years ago. I'm really on a binge yeah. of old episodes. Of- Taryn is finally brave enough to listen to a true crime podcast. Yes, yeah, so I'm going back um, for the goods. But this one guy, the main guy on S Town, mm-hmm. is like probably gay, but also maybe a little internalized homophobia going on. There's some weird shit happening. But he was describing. I want to show it to them. Do you have the clip of him saying uh, it? Because yeah, it's so I can find exactly when funny. it was. 316 chapter yeah here we go okay, you guys play are gonna it. Die. put it up to the mic as we all know every once in a while i'll slip into a accent in an accent of like a country bumpkin man yeah or just anything you've heard recently and this is when shit gets real let me find it you have to give okay. the background of the okay story. so he they go into a like pizza pizza like little caesar's something little caesar and they're recording the podcast so he has the audio recording and the manager comes out and he's like hey were you recording in here and he's like yeah so sorry didn't know i couldn't and he's like yeah whatever and they're like it's okay no worries we're leaving anyways no big deal it like was not a big conflict yeah but the guy that the podcast host is interviewing is like all riled up about it (laughs) and this is his rant as soon as they get in the car he won't let it go here we go the guy was fine to me. This was not a big deal. But as we drive away, John will not let it go. My store. My store. Oh, I love it. Oh, my store. That motherfucker. He doesn't know the pot to piss it or a winter to sling it out. He probably lives over at South 40. South 40 Trailer Park, where Tyler lived at one point, across the street from John. He thinks he's a top dog. He runs the Little Caesars in Buttfucksville, Alabama, in my store. Is he recording anything in my store? <laughs> Hold on, like, I am over this. But then John busts out this lovely word. He's probably a fag, too. They always overcompensate. You know, I've been on both sides of the fence, so I know the psychology of heterosexual and homosexual. That's probably the type that likes to overcompensate. They call themselves tops. You know, they <laughs> shout down the bottom. <laughs> they shout down the bottom. Baby, we should clip the part that says they call themselves the tops. <laughs> and that should be the beginning of every ep- Tops episode. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, we have to. I can't believe that's not like a TikTok sound. I guess because it's too old of a podcast they right now. He's like, I've been on both sides. He sounds like Bill Clinton. He's like, I know. I know the psychology of them homosexuals. <laughs> it's like he is. The best is that it sounds like Buddy Garrity from Friday Night Lights, but like a very gay version. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, they're overcompensating. They they're call themselves top. <laughs> I call them it makes you never want to call yourself a top ever again. No, it don't. I'm like, wow, he would hate that. Dude, we had the most girlhood moment the other day driving home from the Angel City game. Yeah. Just the singing. Just singing in the car. Us and our two gal friends in the back. Our gal friends. We were singing. We were we were making this little noise. It was so we were like, ah! Yeah, we're just being goofy. I love when girls are just like goofy together. We're like fucking weirdos. Girls are so weird and I love that about it. It's us. like we're women, but we're being girlies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a special- I'm like, this isn't womanhood. This is girlhood. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to ask you a question. So we on the podcast. Yes, I did it. Take me um, to jam. We on the podcast. Stay with me. Sorry, but our lender is calling me. Why? I don't know. I'm She'll leave a message. Okay. Why? We're we are we are podcasting. For Sorry, the gals. I brought you into our house. This is what would happen if you were here with us. <laughs> you want to talk to our lender? Tell me. Um. Okay. So we were talking on the podcast how you want to have a crew of chapstick lesbians who are in a relationship with them lesbians. <laughs> yep. But often I feel like when we chat about femme or chat, when we label Mm -hmm. what type of lesbian you are, I feel like you don't ever seem to really know where to put yourself. I never know. Do you? Yeah. I was wondering if you felt that because I feel like I sense that sometimes when we talk about it where it very 
it's not very frequent when frequent when someone's going you are this type of lesbian but they'll be like well obviously cam is more femme yeah it's always like your your label as a lesbian is less femme than me and that's not a label so that's (laughs) you know what i mean i think that i think that where i have a hard time is that like i don't see myself as mask Mm -hmm. the way that we talk about mask in the world yeah yeah but then people in the last like three six months i've heard myself mentioned as a mask like four times you have yeah from like friends and stuff oh interesting they'll be like us masks or whatever but it's like not a joke but it's like whatever yeah and my first reaction is like "Ooh, i feel a little mislabeled but then i'm like what would i rather and i just never know from you yeah interesting yeah i think it's also difficult for you because there was and there was a lot of time in your life where you did present a lot more feminine yeah doing your hair doing more makeup yeah wearing heels or a dress and i don't think you ever you're not the type of person you're not type of lesbian who is like i felt so uncomfortable in that no like you'd put on you're like i feel hot i feel good in this yeah and like i but you don't often wear anything like that now so it's interesting because i feel like people's labels really come out when they have to dress nicely yeah it's like what do you wear in those mm -hmm. situations and the times where i've had to where are when i've been on the groom's side of a wedding Mm. and so wearing a dress was not like it was an option but it wasn't like it was like, oh, cool, I'll make this cool and I'll like wear a suit and that'll be so fun. Yeah. And then I've worn a suit and then like like Katie for Katie's wedding, she's like, you can wear whatever you want. You can wear like a suit, you can wear a dress, whatever. And now I'm like, I actually don't know. Mm-hmm. But even if I, desi- I decide to wear a suit over a dress, it's like I still don't think that you have to wear dresses to be femme. No. And I don't think I'm femme, but I just don't think that not wearing dresses makes me mask. Yeah, I think being kind of in that in-between of like kind of what I feel like we've all labeled as a chapstick lesbian is the hardest because like you said, whenever you have to dress fancy, you kind of have to pick a side Yeah, where there's like, I feel like in your day-to-day there's ways to kind of like feel a little feminine or feel a little sexy. Like there's different things that you can do to not feel like you're fully – not embracing that like very feminine side yeah but not going like full every aspect is feminine like totally I feel like a lot of people live in this in between where it's I want one feminine aspect whether it's my hair feels feminine my makeup feels feminine or like my top whether it's like is it showing a little cleavage is it showing a little tummy like there's like parts of it yeah and I feel like a lot of people fall in that realm and then don't know how to label themselves when they are in that it's like people only know when they go hyper femme or dress a little more masculine. I just think it's like a weird thing that we do in this community. It's like we don't need to be we in the nitty labels. gritty of all of this yeah. stuff. It's just like a little much. Yeah. Um, But I think it's, you know, we've all labeled ourselves in some – we've all like to get to the queer community, we've like had to take on some sort of label. So then yeah. I think we're more apt to like take on more labels. But then I'm like – it's just to me it's very stressful i'm like i don't need that yeah it's again how we were talking in the podcast episode this week it's all us trying to get to know ourselves yeah and a lot of times it's easier to get to know ourselves by seeing ourselves in other people yeah but then that can get you stuck because just because you resonate with one thing of somebody doesn't mean that you resonate with all of the things about them and i think that can throw people off more than it can help I also think like there's two sides to where your kind of label comes from. And it's like, yes, how you like dress, but also like your energy. Totally. And I feel, I feel like, I I don't know how to describe it, but everyone that I've dated besides you has said that I have very like girly energy. I would also say that. Really? Yeah. I've never heard you say that before. I, it's not that you have girly energy. Um, maybe it just is. It's but like everyone like, I've dated, even like, if they look more feminine I think feminine you were the girl me. in that relationship. If I had, like, <laughs> I uh, obviously that's, like, an Isn't insane that funny? thing to say. No, like, I know. But if I had to stare, if I had to do that, I'd be like, 
I'm the family. You're my little, you're my little baby. <laughs> but then I almost feel like you're just baby girl in the same sense that like a boy is Jacob baby. Elordi's baby girl. Oh, maybe I'm baby girl. I think you're, I think your identity is baby girl. <laughs> I really just get little, that. And it's funny because like you're taller than me. Yeah, you dress less I feminine than me. That. But you're baby girl. I'm baby and I, girl. I think a lot of. I think a I'm lot of change my bio. A lot I'm of right, I'm just baby girl. girls, and I feel like this would typically be like a bisexual relationship. I think that's just like who ends up in these relationships. I feel like a lot of women who are dating men, but they feel like when they are home, they're like cuddling them, and they're like widow baby. Would understand our dynamic. I think so too. Yeah, it's like I'm killing the bug. I'm locking up the doors at night. I'm, if I'm, there's a noise at in the middle of the night, I'm figuring it out. I'm baby girl. You're my little sensitive baby girl. <laughs> Whoa. I can't believe you left that out here. What? You're my little sensitive baby you girl. You are. <laughs> I think we cracked the code. I think we cracked the code. I was just thinking too. about that the other day. We were talking. Something again came up in conversation with a group of lesbians. And it was about like femme, mask, whatever. And I feel like, I don't know if it was me projecting my disagreement about it, about them labeling you. Or if I could just sense you. But I feel like you there think are, someone labeled me, and then you were like, "No." Is that in, what you're in a sense, I just like feel. What did they say? I don't remember. I it's it's any time. There's been like three or four times when we're talking about labels like that, yeah. and I just I think I sense you not cringing, but just I can sense you going. I don't I don't know that. I'm just, I'm just I think I think the the sad reality also is that sometimes I feel like. When I am less happy with my body mm. and like my health in general and like how confident I feel in my own body, I find myself presenting maybe more mask in the way She'll that like I'm like, up. I'm covering up. I'm wearing big baggy. I'm always wearing big baggy, but it's like a different baggy. kind of big baggy. It's yeah, you're like, not going for like cute I'm not trying to like baggy. show you're my like, cleavage. like, don't look at me. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like being like. Mm. You're so, still baby girl. You're just always Maybe baby that's... girl. <laughs> that's my baby girl. <laughs> um, but it's a, it. I think that's a piece of it too. So when yeah. I hear that, I yeah. feel the reflection of my body confidence oh, being yeah. like shown. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. 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 So I love you. This is this, this episode is probably better than the main one. I was just thinking that. I'm like. Sorry, regular Epi. This got really cool. This fucking slapped, actually. Wow. Maybe we post this on the Patreon, but public. Oh, my God. I sounded like the guy from Love on the Spectrum. Public. Who? That pauses when he talks. He's like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has like (laughs) a. Just like that. Yeah, that was cute. Okay. Um, Okay. We love you guys. Hope you enjoyed this bonus Epi episode. Still don't know what it is. You know what we should do? What? We should post this tops then we should post it as a bonus later on the regular like in four days amazing you guys get the sneak peek you got the sneaky peeky hey hey sheeky peeky you just want to tell everyone that you're a baby girl (laughs) my baby girl wants the world to know she's baby girl no guys look at her The world needs to know. No, that's okay. not. Maybe that is it. Have a great day to the femmes, the stems, the mass, and the baby girls. And the tops. That's not one of them. But sure. Bye. <laughs>